every page. <laughs> I don't want to hear you say that. Put that umbrella around the ones, take it off you. Warum? How can teaching assistants work with teachers to provide effective support in managing behaviour? John Bailey has come to work with a higher level teaching assistant at Bishop Stopford School in Enfield. Right, so they need to jot that down then, don't they? Jane Rickson and Science NQT Rakesh Ram have evolved a good working relationship which produces results when things are going well. How well it's worked. Right. And then whenever you're ready, if you want to give them five, ten minutes to get that done. OK, so we give them between five and yeah. ten minutes for that and that's then, right. they then have their objectives. Yeah, that's right. Copy. So you can go through the, um, the answers with them, the starter. Yes. OK. OK, well done, Isabel. They're very conscientious in their planning, but their nemesis is Year 7T, an inconsistent class who can be very challenging, but also angelic. Your posters must include information about the forces acting on the parachutes, OK? I've been looking at your posters, and a lot of them, they're really nice, the diagrams are brilliant, but there's no information on the forces. Um, tissue paper. Tissue paper, so... These are strings. First of all, we use the plastic bag. Um, plastic bag underneath... Jane's a mum with grown-up children and used to be the senior science technician at the school before training four years ago as an HLTA. Are the forces going to be balanced on your diagram? Yeah, because if the forces aren't balanced, they'll go a different way. That's right, so if the forces are... If it's already moving and the forces are balanced, what's going to happen to it? It should go down. It'll still keep going down when yeah. at the same speed. It won't just stop in mid air, will it? Three, two, one, go! Impressive, yeah. well done. If 10 was, was very good, if 10 was that lesson, whereabouts are they most of the time on a scale of 0 to 10? 4 or 5. Uh, yes, I so, so you both? 4, yes, yes. OK. Come on, everybody, you know... And so they proved to be in the next lesson. Girls, hurry up. Come on, quickly, two desks. OK, Klein, need to stop talking. Klein, come on. Oh, what's that? Klein, not interested. Get on with your work. It's Klein, it's the third time I've asked you to get on with your work. They're on task, but they're very noisy. Um, they love getting on each other's nerves and trying to get each other in trouble. And it's not just the same few people, it's a majority of the class, which makes it really hard to control who's sort of doing what. Yeah. Right, yeah, seven, stop talking. <laughs> yeah, seven, I'm waiting for quiet and free. Two. One. Principal. I've been keeping track on the majority of students by writing a list of the dates, uh, the offenders, and what they actually did wrong. There are already five people on this list, OK? You know, OK, that probably next week or the week after, OK, I'm going to be tallying up all of the names on this list, OK, and sending letters home to parents. Yes, Evan, sit down in your seats and stop making a fuss. <laughs> Sit down. No, go and sit down. Most of the time it's difficult to, to support properly in there because, because of the noise and because what I'm mainly doing is trying to keep them on task and listening. It's difficult if you have a lesson that's been really challenging to help students that want to learn because there's noise. At times like that, then it, it can be very difficult and you can feel quite disillusioned by it all, really, and wonder why you're... But while you're doing what you're doing. Um, so it's a bit like you're sitting on top of a pressure cooker. It's kind of the absolute classic low-level disruption, isn't it? Yes. And yes. it also reminds us that there's nothing very low-level about low-level disruption. It's, 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 it's replacing learning, isn't it? Mm. It's not a problem for them not wanting to do work, cos they do want to do the work and they do actually do the work um, most of the time. They get it all done, but it's just a level of noise. OK. If, if you wanted to strong things up, it involves being absolutely crystal clear about what your expectations are in the classroom, uh, front-loading positive consequences, and being absolutely clear that both people are involved in it. What would you do? Um, personally, what I'd do is um, 
I'd have a, a good box and a bad box, and I'd say, right, um, everyone who's, uh, basically, if someone's doing something good, I'd say to them, or, you know, give them praise and write their name, put it in the good box. Uh, people in the good box, sort of, like, probably at the end of the week, you know, just do, like, a little raffle and they'll win a suite or something. Um, people in the bad box probably have a little talk with them afterwards, especially people who are continually getting in the bad box. Um, but then I'm thinking, what if I've got a student in the good box and the bad box? That might sort of... If you've got 20 goods, you get your suite. Uh, but you've got 15 bad, so you've got detention as well. That's, the, yeah, that's what happens around here. That's a, that's you know, um, yeah, you choose the behaviour, you choose the consequence. Personally, I wouldn't call it the good box and the bad box. Um, Self-esteem is a big issue with a lot of these children. I'd have something like a good box and a, and a, and a need to have a talk box. Or... <laughs> well, let's have a look at the um, beginning. OK, guys, learning objects is on the board. There's a quick word search for you to get on with. Think about the words you're looking for, OK? Don't blindly just look for them. Right, everybody, listen, you need to get the learning objectives down and then you have a word search to be getting on with. One of the things I was really struck by was the way that you two share authority um, in, in the classroom. Is that a result of deliberate decision or is it something you just do? I think it's just something that's just happened, isn't it, really, yeah. I think? I mean, yeah. um... We never sort of undermine each other. We're just, you know, I, I tell the kids that um, she's just like a second teacher, really, you know. You see, I think it's quite striking what you two do. Uh, in fact, let me just plunge forward away. Um, I know exactly where I want to get to. Okay. Now, this is really striking. In fact, you, you hardly see it, as they say on the television. You're circling the room, and we'll find out what you're doing in just a minute. And you, Jane, are up at the front doing some teaching. I want to see who can fill in the missing spaces in these passages. Hands up only. We can use this to reduce friction. Yes? Lubricants. Lubricants. Well done. Can you tell me how lubricants work? Um, it makes your hands slippery. So... Makes it more slippery, that's right. Very good. Well done. I think we're getting a little bit more tricky now. If you think, um, if you're pedalling along on your bicycle and you put your brake on suddenly, what is the force that comes into operation that is going to slow you down? Um, yes. Friction. Friction, well done. Friction. There are several things going on here. One is you're displaying quite a lot of subject knowledge. Secondly, I think you'll agree she's pretty good at it, teaching in a clear and engaging um, way. Um, and thirdly, it's now absolutely clear that authority in the room belongs to two people. Um, talk to me about that. How did that... Because it's unusual. At the beginning of the day, um, we, we plan about what's going to... You know, if, I, if I'm in Rakesh's lessons, we're here tell me what, what we're doing, and uh, he'll show me his lesson plan, and I'll say, well, would, would you like me to do this part, or would you like me to... You know, whatever, whatever I see down there, and with, with Rakesh's agreement, because it's always, you know, under the guidance of the teacher. If I had to ask you what's good about it, what would you say? Um, per for personal satisfaction, because I really enjoy that, and I, I get much more out of the lesson the more that I've contributed to it. So, so that's making it more interactive, isn't it? Yeah. From the students' point of view, I think um, they look at me as somebody they can ask for guidance, as somebody that knows the subject. Yeah. So this is... is it, you've got a mass in there, have you? And I have a sneaking suspicion it's um, about a change of face and a change of voice. It, it, sort of gets their, it, it sort of gets their attention back again, I think. Rakesh, what, from your point of view, what's good about it? Um, gives me a bit of a break, to yeah. be honest. OK, guys, you should have thought about this. Just all you got to do, what you got to do? It enables me to sort of, while Jane is teaching, to sort of go to the more disruptive kids and just stand by them, you know, just to sort of uh, make sure that they're on task and they're listening. I, I like the sharing of authority. Does it make it more likely that you and she will talk together during the lesson about how things are going, about what might happen next? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we do fleet sort of very quickly. We, yes, yeah. we do. Yes. Are going to give them till quarter past, ten past? Uh, quarter past. Quarter past. Okay. 
depending on how the kids are behaving. Like, if they're really restless and, you know, we might sort of say, right, let's do something just to calm them down a bit or do certain things differently. Mm. You see, I think that's famous. It, it, it's great because uh, you're trying to establish that communication between the two adults working in the room is, is, one, of the, is you know, one of the big issues. John wants Jane and Rakesh to make use of their joint authority to produce more consistent behaviour by setting up positive consequences as well as the negatives and by praising good work. Right, year seven, you should be doing the learning objectives now and after you finish that, you need to link the keywords with the definitions, please. Hurry up. Kenneth? Oh, yeah. Okay, come on. Two more learning objectives to get done. Well done, principal. Excellent. What I want you to do is to draw the diagram and add the forces on it. Okay? Right, is everybody clear about what we need to do? Right, okay. Shh. One sec. You've got five minutes, okay? That is one minute per diagram, an additional minute to think. All right? Don't forget to tell them that's a brilliant working science. Okay, yes, I'm very yeah. pleased. So you're nailing, yes, it's called catching them being good, so you're nailing the behaviour when they're doing it. Right. <laughs> right, there is some talking in the front row. I don't believe that you've finished yet. You were doing extremely well a couple of minutes ago. Right, this is the level. Shh. This is the sound level that I want, OK? This is a good sound level, right? Have you got a picture on my hand? Let's see your picture. That's my mm -hmm. We're talking about measuring and heaviness, OK? We're starting to build up a nice little picture here. Kran said something absolutely brilliant, OK? Clan, could you say it again? Everyone, I want you to listen to this. Nice and loud, Clan. Like, if you're holding something heavy and you drop it, the gravity will be pulling it down faster. Excellent, brilliant. This is fabulous. Let me have a look. The amount of you is still there. You have to do Very good. Very nice positive. handwriting, too. That's excellent. Thank you. Miss. OK, so you need to get this written down. This one is lovely. Let's have a look. Oh, thank you. Let's have a look. Yep. Very good. You've got Thank everything you, down there, yeah? Excellent. Yeah. And I read the forces that are being used as well. Nothing. Yeah, everything so that's excellent. <laughs> right, see you later, guys. Hello, well done. Excellent. I thought that was a good lesson this morning. I thought it was another good lesson. And I think that 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 you and both of you need to be more explicit. Instead of saying, shh, shh, be quiet, I think, you're, I think you need to be doing more saying, when I'm talking, I don't want people talking under. That shh, shh, shh tends to be a sign of stress. Um, and in just the same way, I thought it was great this morning when you were saying, um, uh, this is just the kind of sound level I want well done. And I think you should both do that even more. You know, be absolutely clear about what you want. And every opportunity, because when you do it, it works, doesn't it? You both did it this morning. I thought, ah, ah. That's absolutely brilliant. The more that you do and share the merits and stuff, the better. I think, you know, a few more stars and stickers and all that. I think when you're sort of concentrating on behaviour, it's, it's easy to look to overlook the good behaviour. I think that's, um, oh, that's a mistake I definitely make and not um, reward the good behaviour and comment on it, definitely. Yeah.